Ricardo McIntosh who runs away from the scene of the crime missed out on the Ben Francis Cup final but he's not missing out here ball played through through the goalkeeper into the net Clarendon College now 3-1 up like a knife through butter Clarendon College again just being incisive there and just cutting through the defense of this Dintil technical team and guess what Ricardo McIntosh just firing all that goal through the goal keeper legs hitting the great the big goal onion bag 3-1 again to Clarendon College and they are looking imperious right now Dintil team need to at least score the next goal well if they don't you reckon that Clarendon College will be in the final and the Dintil team started the second stanza quite well they, they were on the front foot and then they just got withdrawn again got lulled into the the same kind of setup in terms of getting men behind the ball trying to stop the play of the Clarendon College team but they are unable to because of the fluidity and the options that Clarendon have on the ball when they are in possession so here's McIntosh once more He's on the right hand side now, goes by one, looking for option, plays it to the top of the 18 yard box. Here now is James, appealing for a penalty. No, says referee Damian Parchment. And the Dintil Technical, they're able to come away with possession and not yet really throwing bodies forward, Dintil Technical. But you think if they are going to sit behind the ball and still concede, it makes no sense. Well, I stated it early in the first half when Clarendon went 1-0 down and you saw the negative shape of the Dintin team in terms of offensive play that the coach does allow them to play and play they did in the last 10 minutes and Paris was really influential in that stanza. Got them the goal. After that, they started quite positive in the second half, but then they have gone back again to the, the setup and they are just looking just really allowing Clarendon College to come on to them and you don't want that from a team with that kind of quality. So... Substitution here for Dintil Technical. Well, not one but two because Andre Fletcher, Fletcher comes out. So, to Antonio Roberts. Last man you saw on screen there was Shamari Davis with 12 goals so far this season. We'll give you confirmation of the, the first substitute. And I tell you what, it's Michael Edwards who I thought had a decent game in the Ben Francis Cup a final corner kick taken dealt with by the Dintil technical defense ball back in the box goalkeeper Hill collects so here's another effort over the crossbar but only just and again the Dintil team now just giving up position deeper and deeper in their area and the Clarendon team pressing and with that kind of pressure they are winning the football and they just was unfortunate for Clarendon that they didn't score. So here's a look at it again. It was Phillips and that one was always rising leaning back just as the time when he was going to take the shot. He got his body over the ball but just at the opportune moment and gave the ball some elevation and went over the bar so Kimani Campbell there so there's confirmation Shamari Davis coming on for Antonio Roberts Michael Davis uh, quite an effective player I saw him in the Ben Francis Cup final I was wondering why he wasn't on the park Michael Edwards yes that is the you are forgiven if you, come, if you join Edwards with Shamari Davis they both came on at the same time <laughs> well it was Michael Edwards I thought he was he showed some promise in that earlier game in the Ben Francis Cup final Michael he did the number four for the and Davis also was he got Davis the goal and, yeah got, he got did that got early the goal. goal yeah and again you think whether or not Curtis Hamilton got his strategy wrong or not he got his um, team wrong but you you really can't say that because he's a person who picks the team he's a person who is seeing the team for whatever reason Shamari Davis you remember I had to come off the yeah, park after he, about 27 minutes in that final finals he had an injury so don't know if he wasn't he thought that he might not be much fit for for 90 minutes and uh, want to hold him back in terms of base and how the game was go game would be going but um, now he's on here's a ball played through a chance for 
A 3 2, that was close. Again, lovely true ball there. Player ensuring that he kept it on his left hand side and drove the shot to goal. But the goalkeeper to me looked like he had his angles covered. Let's look at it again. Yes, that goalkeeper came across as his angles covered. It would have to be something of a immense quality to beat him there on his near post. Look as if it was probably Frackleton. Although we saw last night, you watched the Premier League last night. Yeah, all right. Garden is uh, up against Harbour View. Deacon baptized in the back of the net with a lovely shot beating the goalkeeper. All ends up on that near post. You call it a shot. <laughs> a rocket it was. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, the, the second goal for Arnett Gardens reminds me of a goal that Savian Virgo scored against New Zealand in a practice game some years ago. Reggae boys. That ball really to me, you'd have to convince me that it wasn't a, he, he didn't go for <laughs> before a square, but again it ended up in the back of the net. So here is Dintil Technical. They're hoping for something to end up in the back of the net. Paris there looking for the foul, didn't get it. And I don't usually question the strategies and the tactics by coaches. But having already seen Dintil Technical and having already seen Clarendon College, you, I think you are in a position just to ask a few questions of the, the coaching staff of Dintil Technical in particular. Because I thought that Shamari Davis, especially in the last few games for Dintil Technical, you don't score 12 goals in a season for nothing. He's a pays the customer is a skillful customer and he looks decent when he offers options for Kahim Paris up front Andre Fletcher has pace has skill but I, I, I just thought that he was used in a more you call it reduced Use position, position. He, was yeah, in a position. position he played in midfield yeah. so even though the formation said 4-2 four, four he was you more almost like get a the, five. Yeah, you almost get the feeling that they were operating with only one person up front. Right. Here now is Edwards. Ball played back to Kimani Campbell. A whistle on the play. Freckleton goes down under the challenge. So a free kick here for the Dintil technical team. As we look back at it, it was Phillips with that challenge on Freckleton. Goalkeeper Williams trying to get his wall sorted out and uh, was trying to catch the goalkeeper out there, Freckleton. And it wasn't a bad effort. Quick thinking, but I just thought that he got too much elevation on the ball. Uh, didn't really, wouldn't really have affected <laughs> goalkeeper, but he just, knowing the camera is, uh, cameras are on him, he just gave us something for sure. And really haven't had anything <laughs> to, to do, do but watch the penalty <laughs> pass him. Because he really didn't attempt to save the penalty, he just decided that he's going one way. And he went that way, the ball went the other way. So here's the ball played forward. And Tintil Technical in the box is Davis, here's Edwards. Goes down under the challenge, Damian Parchment says play, play on. And it will be very interesting looking back at that because there's no whistle on the play for a foul so maybe Damian Parchman called it the other way yes it looks that way but again lovely excellent play on that right hand side by the number 18 for O'Shane Baker for Dintil getting into the, the box and ensuring putting it across the face of goal and guess what? No penalty there. Yeah, the referee got it right. Yes, it was Shamari Davis who made that overlapping run. So, a link up there, well, almost a link up there between the two substitutes. Exactly. And Edwards and Shamari, Shamari Davis. Davis. And the kind of enterprise shown there by Davis. It, it must then be. comes back to the question of him not starting this game. It must game. be because of fitness. It can't be nothing else, Renardo, because you wouldn't want to have this quality on the park and he's much fit, can play 90 minutes. You have seen him in the in a, in a finals and any time I've seen him on the park, he has always impacted the game. So it must be some level of fitness in that he can't play 90 minutes right now. So here's the question I put to you then, Anil. 
if you have a player as we look back at this play I'll start him and then take him off if anything I I'm thinking that as well you know run the risk of having because put him on and then if something happens you'll have to pull him back out and you're chasing the game right now you are you might if he was on the park you might you you might be in the lead here is Kimani Campbell going forward Edwards with possession loses it and this one played forward Nick Hugh Daly in a foot race he could win it slips it by the goalkeeper and slipped it by the left upright as well the Q daily again even when he's out of the game and you think that he's not he's not going to affect the game one ball just slipped down the channel and there was daily on it as a flash and guess what beating everybody all ends up all, also the goal but good good thinking there by Nikki daily seeing the goalkeeper advancing off his line just went for that one timer and you ask why the goalkeeper advanced but maybe him advancing really helped that here now is David And I stated it that Dintin need to be the next team that scored and that they did and it came through Shamari Davis again overlapping down this right hand side goalkeeper leaving his line and left for dead Davis just chipped it over his man man and that onion back dance 3-2 Dintin in the game again and guess what you might just be getting those six goals <laughs> so his 13th goal of the season and O'Neill I'll give no prize for this one but guess who provided the pass? <laughs> it was the Mike, other substitute, Michael, Michael Edwards. Edwards. <laughs> so maybe, I'll tell you what, if Dintel Technical comes out and wins this one, Coach Curtis Hamilton will tell you that his substitutions came at the right time. Here is Davis once more dispossessed this time. i tell you what, Clarendon College look rattled right now. Here now is Paris. The crowd is getting behind this Dintel technical team. Paris was trying to get onto it. This one booted long. This is where the danger is. When Nikhil Daly gets to the end of it. <laughs> Clarendon College two goes to the good yet again. Nikhil Daly on the score sheet yet again. Dintel technical huffing and puffing. But guess what? Clarendon College there to extinguish any fire that they were going to lead. Renardo. Anytime Dintel came close, Clarendon kept roaring back. And again, New Q Daly. We saw glimpses of what he wanted to do earlier. Goalkeeper beating him off his line. And he got it right this time. Picture perfect. Through the channels again. One touch. Bang. Everybody beating all ends up right into the old onion bag. Clarendon College 4 2. And looking on a saleable right now. I tell you what, if I was a coach or the coach of Dintel Technical, I would be very upset with goalkeeper Demneria Hill. The first time the ball was played through, he advanced. We didn't think that he should have advanced. Nikhil Daly slipped the ball past him, but it went past the left upright. This time, again, the goalkeeper advanced maybe some 20 meters or 20 yards rather outside the penalty area and allowed Nikhil Daly once again to slip the ball past him and this time it was destined for goal I'm telling you the per people here in Montego Bay having a treat this afternoon six goals and I think there will be more Renato both teams really going for broke and Clarendon College really showing that whatever Dintil can provide they can also so a couple of substitutions here so Michael Martin comes into number three he plays he replaces Tajay Brown the other player that was on yellow card for the Clarendon College team and we'll give you confirmation of the other substitution here is Dintel Technical they must respond at this stage they have to put everything forward here is Edwards and now Paris Paris just towards goal wide of the mark Karim Paris there getting a little pocket of space running onto the ball and decided to go for the shot and so it was here's the other substitution Kevin Ankle that Ankle came comes out. out Panton comes in so the number 20 comes in Panton Ankle comes out he wears eight 
for the Clarendon College team. 4-2 they lead with 23 and a half minutes left of regulation time. And the way this game is going, we could be in for more goals. I'm seeing at least two more goals on the cards, Renato. Where do they go, though? 5-3? You called it not me. Four, four. <laughs> Here's another ball played over the top by Phillips. It comes to Nikki Daly. Daly plays it back. Now with Martin, the substitute, switches play. Here's Clarendon College ball in the box. Daly at the back post. Daly turns, twists, dispossessed. Still Daly. Daly goes by one. Nikki Daly over the bar. The Q Daly there showing his strength, showing his enterprise, showing his fight. Did everything right, but just got too much under the shot. But again, that shows you the hunger of a striker wanting more goals. So, here now is Campbell for Dintil Technical. And I tell you what, O'Neill, since Dintil decided to put more bodies forward, they've got a few more opportunities that especially led to that second goal for them stated it earlier if dintil dintil now two goals behind they'll have to push forward and they're gonna leave spaces behind and that's what the client and team wants to exploit and we do apologize for the uh, technical difficulties and the disruption in quality for viewers at home here is paris paris losing possession whistle on the play and the possession remains with Clarendon College. And you wonder if Daniel Parchment couldn't have played the advantage for Clarendon College. And one thing you have to give credit to this Clarendon College team. They do not, they do not go away from what is their bread and butter. And that is passing, moving, linking out the play. So here now is Phillips with possession. Martin now, the substitute. Back to Phillips. So... A bit of a passing game here between those two. Attack, mode of attack is changed. Here's another substitute, Panton. It's this one in the box here now is Edwards. Plays it to Paris. Paris looking for options. It's Kaheem Paris. Goes on a dribble, Paris. He will be hunted down, Paris. Forced to go back in his defensive area. Nikki Daly being asked to stay on the last defender for Dintil Technical. Here's a ball over the top. Easy clearance for Clarendon College. Here is Paris. Plays it inside. Dintil with possession. Through Freckleton. Plays it over to the right hand side. Possession still with Dintil Technical. Looking for places to go. A wild swing there, goalkeeper Williams keeps it in. Don't know why the urgency for Williams to keep it in because it, it was it was driven by a Clinton player. But I guess he <laughs> and now he goes down just brainless there for me, Bernardo. Explain that one for me. <laughs> well he went down and he's now calling for a change of footwear. And referee Damian Parchment needs to get a hold on this game. He's wearing six pegs. They're iron pegs, Peg. which it, it suits the conditions. I'm not <laughs> sure what he wants to change. Maybe he needs that NFL boot. <laughs> Those have a, lot, a few more pegs, but I don't understand the reason for all of that. He kicks it off, though. And it will have a hold up in play as goalkeeper Benjamin Williams changes his footwear I'm not sure what's happening with the shoe a Wendy Ferguson there the young lady she's the physio at Clarendon College so he's calling for the left foot of his other shoe, shoe. Oh, keep a Williams Apparently that one just got a bit tight or something. He grew, but he had nothing much to do all game outside of taking the ball twice out of the back of his net. I think this is the most action <laughs> so he's getting. It's the only <laughs> so he has shed the pink and he's going for green. green. But this this seems to be a turf or something more for with rubber studs, which I don't think would be much con to conducive for this kind of condition. So I, so what you're you're saying is that 
the goalkeeper could ask for a change of food come a little bit later on in the game uh, or maybe like a, a lady swapping the flat shoes for heels yeah. <laughs> it's kind of tell you what he's given his it's sponsors, his sponsors <laughs> some amount of mileage <laughs> Well, this one looks pretty new. I think I'd prefer to keep the the peg, the bone studs because of the conditions. But I guess he knows. I I think so too. But then again, I'm I'm a commentator. He's the goalkeeper, and he's going to lay down on this board as well. <laughs> again. And goalkeeper. Uh, and I, I tell you what, referee Danny and Parchment. I probably needs to have a word with the goalkeeper. And we probably just adds all the time, and now the other goalkeeper goes down. It's contagious. Whatever he caught, he's going yes. to change his glove. Yeah. Goalkeeper Hill. It seems to be contagious. It's a disease uh, going around on goalkeepers right now. Or and I tell you what, it's tough on Danian Parchment because he now has to run to the other, other end, end of the field to see what's happening with the goalkeeper. And they're maybe making a substitution sure. until technical because um, at this point, so maybe the goalkeeper just saw the reaction from his coach and decided that he's going to go Without. down. So we see a substitution here, and it's not usual. So the goalkeeper comes out. So a Troy Taylor comes in for Demario Hill. For Demario Hill. Well, after conceding four goals, uh, I would be injured, especially the last one. Demario Hill. <laughs> Demario Hill. <laughs> And I tell you what, there were a couple of goalkeeping errors. The goal from McIntosh went under the goalkeeper. Through his legs. Yeah, he should have done better with that one. And then the strike from Nikhil Daly's second goal. But Nikhil Daly uh, is as if practiced it earlier. And, he's, and he, he, he and they say practice becomes perfect. perfect. So a perfect practice becomes perfect. And he had a good <laughs> look at it first time up missed out and now until they give the ball away so the goalkeeper could be called into action early <laughs> and it doesn't do very well because it's now 5-2 in favor of Dintil in favor of Cardinal College rather and it's Walker who gets his second so the first job for goalkeeper Troy Taylor will be to pick up the ball out of the back of the net. And give Shamar Walker there some credit. New goalkeeper, cold of course, wouldn't have done, gotten, gotten warm, beaten on his near post again. <laughs> make, it even, make it even more atrocious. And uh, right now I can't see Clarendon College being pegged back here. Clarendon College 5-2 to two on a saleable lead right now. I, I tell you what. That makes now three goals that we can put down to some goalkeeping error. But even before it got to the goalkeeper, Dintil Technical gave away the ball unnecessarily, really. Yes, and again, they have been conceding position deeper and deeper in their half as the game has gone gone by. And uh, they just uh, there they gave it away almost right on top of the 18-yard area, giving Lamar Walker not much to do but just to dribble down on the goalkeeper and place it. So, Dintil Technical have a mountain to climb. Probably the largest mountain in the world. Here they are, however. Here is Davis trying to get to the end of it. Good defensive work, and Clarendon Collins, they can go in the opposite direction. Here is Sean Day James. I think the Kilimanjaro right now climbing, it can be easier for Dean Till than really getting back those three goals. And a couple of these goals, you can say, are almost self inflicted. Yes, it has been. So you think how much better this Dintel technical team can be if they had some competent goalkeepers? Competent goalkeepers and I, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, one or two better defenders. Yeah, because in a couple of blatant defensive error. Here is Nikhil Daly in the box. He's going for a hat-trick. Daly! And goalkeeper Troy Taylor has his first to save. Yes, and Troy Taylor, they'll be happy that he got a touch of the football. Because it, one of the things, especially your goalkeeper coming on, you, you want to at least go through at least the first 10 minutes unscathed. And they just threw him into the line of fire by giving yeah, up that Yeah, he didn't even make it out of the first, <laughs> first minute. 10 minutes. Here is uh, Clarendon College. Now ball with the Dintil Technical. Shamari Davis trying to get to the end of it. Paris taken down once more. Whistle on the play. Just keep Paris here. 
most foul player all game. He has not really had it, saw glimpses of his ability, but uh, not able to really sustain that kind of that kind of pressure and play. And this pretty much proves that Clarendon College, they're at least three goals better than Tintil Technical. Yes, they are. Because they, 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 just how they play and the composition of the team, the movement, the passes, the channels. If you try to block them within the middle, they are going to go wide. They have the players and the competence. They have a striker that is that plays the line, leads the line very well. So Paris, or Tintil Technical in focus here is Dintil with possession and have to get at least three goals here is Paris going forward he has already scored one and now Clarendon College and they're going the other way Nikhil Daly is now one and one with the Dintil technical defender and he gets by Nikhil Daly charging into the box still with Daly Thought not being forced to go wide thought that Daly could have slipped in Walker uh, when he went wide but he has been leading the line well the thing with the Nikhil Daly that is most impressive is that when the ball comes to him in, in, in any condition he lets it stick he does not give up the possession of the football so it allows his team to transition and come onto him and that is important because if it wasn't sticking with him what will happen is that he'll be losing possession and be coming back at Clarendon College so I thought, think that that's one of the better qualities that I've seen from him this afternoon so Dale is searching for a hat-trick so to Walker substitution there as Ricardo McIntosh comes out Javel Ellis comes in number 17 for Clarendon College long throw in the box now here is Edwards has done well since coming on for Dintil Technical. Lost possession there. Dintil will get it back in the form of a throw in. The Dintil team can't really hold their heads in shame. They have come out and they have played, they have utilized a number of strategies and it just haven't come off. But they have really quit themselves quite well, just that they have run into a team. And that isn't Barcelona, by the way, that's actually St. Elizabeth Technical. Yes, they have run into a Clarendon College team that's filled with uh, much better player per player on the park and a, a much more organized and disciplined and good unit, well trained, well drilled unit. Yeah. So nothing to be shamed of sometimes when you run into teams of this quality. Now, and goalkeeper Benjamin Williams there again going to the floor properly, eating up some more time off the clock. Not sure why his team is leading by five goals to two. Might just need to change his right boot. <laughs> so here now is Tintil Technical going forward. The problem with Dintil also, they don't possess a lot of pace in their team. So a lot of the plays that they build up players have, have been methodical. They did show some pace in terms of when they injected injected Shamar Davis on that right hand side, but outside of the team it's not really as it doesn't have the pace and the movement. Yeah, Paris here winning what I think is a cheap free kick. Well, he, he will tell you that if it goes in the back of the net, it's not cheap. Yeah, Karen and Carly will pay the price for it. It will be all solid goal. So free kick here for Dintil Technical in could be a potentially dangerous area for Clarendon College goalkeeper Benjamin Williams and if Dintil Technical gets three quick goals I reckon that it would be the first person not to waste time Paris standing over this one and he's a player that you want to stand over this one here is Paris towards goal goes wide of the mark Paris here going for all power and just misdirected but again he has tried this afternoon I've, I, I've seen him in around three games now and I think this is the best I've seen in terms of his, his, his play he has been a little more consistent and he has been in the game yeah, and, and Paris I reckon young player plays in the Kasafa under 17 recently for a Cavalier you think Fields spent all his playing years at Dintil Technical I think um, for pre persons like Paris and we have seen it in the Manning Cup um, with um, 
to St. George's player. Sometimes you play one year. I think that if you're ahead of, your, ahead of the, the, the competition, you need to move on. I think playing the Premier League now for Paris would be more, much better for me and more suited for him in terms of his development than staying at the schoolboy level. And you could very much see him in the Premier League for Cavalier at some point. Well, I think that is what I, I would be aspiring to if I was Paris right now. You're much better than the field. Why stay there? You're not going to improve. So, yellow card's been shown here to Kimani Campbell of Dintil Technical and also Nikhil Daly. So, Daly having gotten on the score sheet now gets on the card. You really don't want that from your attacking player, especially in a game like this. There's Kimani Campbell, confirmation of his yellow card. Yeah, his name was Alex Marshall. Uh, I saw where Marshall, he had a breakout season, stayed, came back, and wasn't the player again that he was the year before. Here is Dintil Technical. I'll give you a little scenario after this attack from Dintil Technical. Goalkeeper Williams, probably go to the ground yet again. Showing off his dribbling skills. Or not when he doesn't go to the ground. And giving us some Bruce Kribbler esque or Dudoff kind of moves. And there's a confirmation of Nikhil Daly's yellow card. So you could potentially see a Cavalier team with a Hakeem Paris. Nikhil Daly and, and Alex Marshall. Him. Well, Alex Marshall. Siobhan Marsh right. is also there. So a couple of young exciting players and they are doing well they, they are doing well at the moment in the Premier League so here now is Dintil Technical they're not doing so well but it's not the play getting closer and closer towards the end of this and at this point what you are sure of is that there won't be extra time and penalties Very much still have it. So Shane Baker comes off. Yes, Coming in is the number 16 for Dintil Technical. That is from Mario Robinson. The season all just winding down for Dintil. And Clarendon College also making a substitution. Demek Fagan comes in. And he replaces in a while. Clarendon College player there just. It's tripping over his own foot. Game has lost some spark temporarily now. Especially flat. after that. A couple of minutes. minutes. From maybe 10 minutes from about minute 63 until about minute 74. There yeah, were both teams were trading goals really. We saw about <laughs> three goals during that period. Here's a ball played over the top. And, uh, gave up pretty early in that one. Freckleton. What would Dintil do now for three goals? No. It would make the <laughs> game more interesting. The keep was longer. It would make the trip back to St. Catherine a happy one. Should they get three, three goals, goals and then go on to win? Yeah. But currently, I tell you what, songs will be sung from Montego Bay <laughs> to Clarendon. Yeah. Curtis Hamilton, will he have a job come tomorrow morning? Well, a lot of questions will be asked of him because uh, I thought that as we were alluded to earlier about the, the changes, why he did not go maybe with uh, his best starting 11 at first and then see what you get from them and then you maybe try and hang on at the end. His best starting 11 would have produced a fourth minute goal in the Ben Francis Cup final. Now here is Walker, he's on two goals, and so far every time he sees Dintil Technical, he scores. I think he got two as well in the Ben, ben Francis, Francis Cup, yeah. so four goals in his last two meetings against Dintil Technical. Sure he'd want to better that this afternoon with an trick. Do the players get the ball when they score? I know in the professional leagues they do, if they score an trick. Sure, it's good that you said the professional leagues. <laughs> Well, seeing like you don't get no level of remuneration here, 
and it's getting don't know if that is fog or is it oh, oh. i tell you what that was a crunching challenge that was something like a a right-handed blow in a title fighting match with mike tyson at the end of it it was crunching boom no ball there all man that should have been a straight red let's see what happens and i there. tell you what the the player got up and he was cursing i'm not sure <laughs> to who here is clarendon college oh dwelt a little bit too long on the ball there so it was the substitute jafel ellis who got that yellow card so we're into now the last three minutes of regular time. Clarendon Collins, you're sitting pretty at 5-2. And just no need for that tackle. No need whatsoever. He can't be out of frustration. And I tell you what, <laughs> it goes back to the first goal for Dintil Technical. And that decision not to give Sanjay Williams a red card compromised the referee situ in, in that situation and it could have changed the complexion of the game so much here is Dintil technical however trying to at least change their score line will the goalkeeper put the ball in the box no it won't booted upfield now we're getting closer to we're into the last 120 seconds of regulation time and now it's falling heads dropping for Dintil really now just playing playing out the minutes uh, this is where your tear duct starts to get a little bit heavy yes season coming to a end and you're being beaten by an opponent that have beaten you earlier in the in a title game can't be can't be good at all psychologically for you right now if yeah. you're a dintel player yeah and it probably cements the fact that or the assumption that Clarendon college are the best the costa cup team well there's another game that will be played and i'm sure one team will have a uh, will have another say on that and uh well, two teams two teams say huh? they will want a piece of this kind of college team I'm sure St. Elizabeth Technical would love to have another opportunity. So here is Dintil Technical. No whistle on the play for the challenge. Again, we apologize for the quality of the game here. Well, not the game, but transmission. So we're into the last 30 seconds of this first semi-final in the 2017 Da Costa Cup competition Clarendon College barring an absolute miracle they're through to the final having lost and last won the Da Costa Cup in 2014 Jackie Walters was the coach then Dintil Technical got to the final the year after so foot closer to title number eight for Clarendon College and we've now seen 90 minutes four will be added so four minutes for Dintil Technical to get three goals and four minutes for Clarendon College to move out of the last four into the last two here is Dintil Technical and at this point you can't say four minutes for Nikki Daly to get a hat trick. I can't remember seeing Nikki Daly. Maybe he was substituted for the number nine, fake, and we're waiting for confirmation of that substitution. Here is Michael Edwards though. Has looked bright since coming on for Dintil Technical. Always that kind of player that like, injects a lot of pace and movement into the game. So here is Dintil going forward through Freckleton. He runs this one out. And that does encapsulate Dintil. Him running it out. Time is running out. And uh, they'll have a long season out to rethink what went wrong for next season. Yeah, all of a year. So, in college, 
looked easy. We're looking for a double. Over it until technical. And also a double this season. Here is Michael Edwards. Good challenge. Lost possession did Edwards. And we haven't called Kaim Paris' name in a long time. Here is Dintil Technical. Ball played behind Paris. Oh, good move. Paris wins possession though. Here he is, Kaim Paris. Twist turns. Picks out the player back to Paris. Loses possession. Ball back with Clarendon College. It's now Walker leading the line. So, he's a goal away from a hat trick as well. So it's safe to say that Nikhil Daly is somewhere sitting on the bench. Yeah, with a double increase on the day. So here is Dintil Technical. Here is Paris. Ball with a Dintil Technical. Can they add at least another goal to their tally? Here is the school from St. Catherine. Here is Edwards. His shot is blocked. Ball comes back to Edwards. Here is Paris. Fakes. Tries to go through two players. Can't do so properly. Should have taken the kick earlier. Dintil technical. Can they put a little bit more respectability on this score line? Because as it stands. They would have been beaten by six clear goals in their last two games against Clarendon College. Here is Edwards once more. Whistle on the play. This was fouled. We're into the last minute. So seconds now separates Clarendon College from here in the final whistle. Here is Cheese in the box. Dispossessed. Whistle on the play. And Clarendon College would want this to be the last kick of the game. And if it is Benjamin Williams to take it, it will be the last kick of the game. And it is. <laughs> so, for the field, all eyes will be on Danian Parchment. For the first in a long time Danian Parchment will be the center of attraction but is there time for Clarendon College to get the sixth they won't get it on that attack there is a time Danian Parchment signals the end of the first the semi-final and the seventh time the Costa Cup winners they move into the last two to make it eight the last came in 2014 Will 2017 be another year to celebrate for Clarendon College? They've made light work of Dintil Technical. And on the day, one team turned up. The other, they're yet to be seen. Dintil here came, change a strategy, change a plan, but same result. Clarendon College just showing their class and showing that they're a better organized, better run unit all over the park although Dintil tried Karim Paris did his best but uh, it was just down to the brilliant sheer brilliance of a well organized Clarendon College unit and they look unstoppable anybody they face in the final will definitely have to come good so we look back at uh, the goals here's the first one from Nikhil Daly that came after minute 20 the pass that set up by McIntosh and then Walker, peach of a free kick. And that uh, beat goalkeeper Hill all ends up. And it ended up in the back of the net. Not much the goalkeeper could have done. Paris brought Dintil back in the game. Made it 2-1 at that stage after 41 minutes. That is all they would go into the break. But after the resumption, it was Clarendon College who struck early. And it was McIntosh who provided the pass for the opening goal. No accepting a pass for what was goal number three for Clarendon College. Goalkeeper Hill should have done better with that one. Edwards and Davis combining minutes after coming on to the park to make it 3-2. And at that stage, you think we're in for a frenetic end to the game. And then this clearance... 
that really shouldn't have been nothing more than a run from Nikhil Daly resulted in his second on the day that came after 64 minutes and that was 4-2 and then there was a substitution the goalkeeper was replaced but a change of keeper didn't mean a change of fortune for Dintil Technical Walker his second and the fifth on the day for Clarendon College and that is how it would end Clarendon College 5 Dintil Technical 2 so attempts on goal Clarendon College with the majority there but close with Dintil Technical possession Dintil Technical 53 47 not so sure about that but maybe in the last a few minutes falls 11 to 8 in favor of Clarendon College so I tell you what up next will be the second semi-final between St. Elizabeth Technical and Rassiz. Join us on TVJ Sports Network. We'll have that for you. So we leave you on TVJ and with the news that Clarendon College, they're the first finalists of the Docosta Cup competition. Is your order? I think this is not exactly what we ordered. I ordered a Coca-Cola Zero. No problem. I can give you zero calories, zero sugar, and a great Coca-Cola taste. Here's the Coca-Cola Zero you ordered. Yeah. Do it again. You still look like you need a Coca-Cola.